Now, so far we've talked about simple harmonic motion when we just have the accelerating force back to the equilibrium. We call that the restoring force. Well, what if there were some other forces involved other than that force that is proportional to the displacement? So let's split the sheet in half again. On the left-hand side, we're going to look at damping. This is when we have a resistive force. Such a force always has to oppose the motion of the object that's undergoing SHM. So always in opposite direction to velocity. So I love pushing my little niece, Seren, on her swing. And once I lift her up to this amplitude, I can just let her go and she's gonna start swinging like this. Now, if there wasn't any air resistance, what would happen? Well, she would just keep on going forever and ever and ever if there weren't any drag forces. Because you've got the restoring force getting greater and smaller, greater and smaller, and she'll just keep on going. But in reality, we do have air resistance. If there was no air resistance, then I would just draw a sine wave that would stay the same amplitude. But in reality, What's going to happen? Her amplitude is going to get less. We can actually sort of plot how the amplitude is going to decrease over time. We call this light damping. Light damping is going to affect the time period ever so slightly, but we pretend that it doesn't really, that it's just enough force to keep the time period the same, but it is going to reduce the amplitude. So eventually Seren's going to come to a standstill like that. But it's time for Seren to go inside and she's swinging away like that and I want to bring her down nice and safely. So she's at the top, what do I do? I grab her at the top and I bring her down nice and slowly like that. What I'm doing there is heavy damping. Heavy damping is when a force is applied that doesn't let it even oscillate, just brings the displacement down to zero really, really slowly. That's heavy damping. What if Seren is in trouble and I need to stop her quickly though? I don't have time for her to stop with air resistance or my heavy damping, just bringing it down slowly. I need to stop her as quickly as possible. What I do is let her fall, but then right at the last second, I pull really tightly to make her stop at equilibrium. So she might overshoot past equilibrium a tiny bit, but not much. So here she is just going along normally, and then I need to stop it, grab her, and then she comes to a stop. That's what we call critical damping. Obviously that would be the one that's most unpleasant for her because she feels a massive force. When they opened the Millennium Bridge across the Thames, they found that it started oscillating too much. And so they had to introduce dampeners on the bridge to provide a resistive force to the velocity so it stayed nice and still. What's the opposite of that? Instead of having a resistive force, we have a driving force. This is a force that is in the same direction as velocity. What does it do? Speeds it up and it increases the amplitude. Now, if I want to push Seren on the swing and I want her to get higher, she's swinging like this. The restoring force is trying to bring her back to equilibrium. But if I want her to go higher, as she goes through equilibrium, I'm going to push and I'm providing a force when there is no restoring force and she's gonna get even higher. As she comes back down, I'm gonna push from the other side and she's gonna get even higher. So we're talking about a force that has the same frequency as the natural frequency or resonant frequency. When we talk about natural and resonant frequency, we're talking about what frequency would something oscillate at if there were no other external forces. If this is the case and it's 90 degrees out of phase with the restoring force, then we're going to increase the amplitude of the thing that's oscillating. And we saw this happen with the Millennium Bridge. That's why they had to install dampeners. What happened? The bridge started moving ever so slightly to the left. What did people do? They put their left foot down to support themselves and that made it go even further. On its way back, people put their right foot down, which provided a force in that direction as well. And as it got worse, people started balancing themselves even more and the amplitude kept on increasing and increasing until it shook really quite scarily. Lastly, the driving force frequency doesn't have to be exactly the same in order to increase the amplitude. Once it gets similar to the resonant frequency, then it starts to resonate, amplitude starts to increase. And also, if the driving force frequency is a multiple of the resonant frequency, then it's going to have the same effect. I hope you found that useful. If you did, then please leave a like. If you have any questions or think I've missed anything out that you'd like to see, then please leave it in a comment down below and I'll see you next time.